All right, welcome back, sixth graders. Uh, so again, remember we're going to make a summary of this lesson um, as you watch it. So play it, pause it, stop it, do whatever um, to make sure that you get that summary um, as well as you can, so that we can uh, discuss those points later in class. All right. Uh, so for today, um, with our notes, it's going to be like a big flow chart. All right. So um, each point is going to represent an important aspect. Uh, of uh, of Hinduism and how it got started and how it spread uh, and some of the points of it. After that, there will be a little short video for you to watch um, within the vodcast. So you have a vodcast within a vodcast, I guess, if you want to say it that way, uh, about what will be um, just kind of a little demonstration of the spread of uh, Buddhism. All right, so here we go. All right, so uh, this gentleman by the name of Siddhartha Gautama, uh, he was a Hindu prince and he was sheltered for a long part of his life, okay? Um, then he escaped and he witnessed old age sickness and death for the first time, all right? And he's in his like mid 20s, 30s uh, when he witnessed this and he had been sheltered from it for so long that it was really shocking to him. Okay, so what he ends up doing is he gives up his wealth, his family, and his life of ease to find causes of human suffering. This intrigued him so much he had to figure out how and why this happened. Okay. Um, so he studies a bunch of the Hindu philosophers and studies with them, um, but he feels that their ideas didn't satisfy him. He thought there was something more uh, in life. Okay, So he decided that maybe the answer is not outside. There's no books about it. There's no ancient scripts about it. So I must, I must focus inward. So he began um, this meditation uh, to help enlighten himself, okay? And this is where we get the name Buddha, or enlightened one from. And so from these, he begins to travel all across India, and he does all of these various teachings, which um, become known as Buddhism. All right, let's see if it goes. Okay, here we go. All right, uh, so he taught that to end human suffering, um, you have to, there's a right way of doing it, and you have to have a lot of self-denial. So to be released from these sufferings, uh, you have to give up wealth, power, and pleasure. All right. Uh, to do this, uh, he devised this way called the middle way, uh, which avoids too much pleasure or worry, because with a lot of nice things comes a lot of hardships, okay, in Buddha's eyes. All right. So he taught that People are equal, and anyone could follow the path to nirvana, or lasting peace, um, regardless of social class. And this was starkly different from Hinduism, because in Hinduism, um, you had to, your soul had to be reincarnated over and over and over again until you could reach nirvana. The Buddha taught, well, if you give up, if you follow my middle way, your soul will reach there no matter what. doesn't matter if you're Upanishadas. The lo or sorry, not Upanishads. Um, if you are a lower class, then you could reach that spiritual um, enlightenment. If you are a fabulous person, follow my way. All right. Um, so, so Buddhism and Hinduism kind of share many beliefs. However, the biggest thing is that Buddhism um, almost died out completely in India. Um, is just Hinduism is so rooted in India and its culture that the new ideas of Buddhism kind of fell deaf upon the people of many of the people of India, but it spread to many other places uh, within the world. Okay, um, so these missionaries and traders again. Traders, we'll talk a lot about that in class, uh, but traders are very they're a very integral part of our history and how things get to where they are um, so buddhism today is practiced in japan korea the koreas tibet and vietnam because of these missionaries and traders uh, that have spread along the religion okay so let's go ahead we're going to watch this little video here um, to talk about the spread of buddhism Spread of Buddhism to AD 500 
This map shows the spread of Buddhism to AD 500. By following the red arrows, you can trace the spread of Buddhism, which originated south of Tibet in India and quickly was spread in all directions by missionaries and merchants. As Buddhism gradually spread into China, Japan, and Southeast Asia, it split into two different sects, Theravada and Mahayana. Mahayana Buddhism spread to the Northeast, where it is currently practiced in Mongolia, Japan, and China, while Theravada spread to the Southeast, to Burma, Laos, Thailand, and Cambodia. Mahayana Buddhism, shown in green and purple, was an easier sect for ordinary people to pursue, resulting in a larger following. All right, that does it for our lesson today. Uh, remember that summary, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to bring them to class, and we will talk about it then. Talk to you guys later. Bye.